this week on Your Newsroom. I'm Daniel Whitman. Georgia Southern's homecoming week is this week. Celebrating Eagle Pride, the university will be holding events all week, and our cameras were there at the kickoff parade to welcome homecoming and the Kiwanis Club's annual fair to Statesboro. I'm Ashley Watts. October is a month filled with cooler weather, candy, and cool costumes. With Halloween events fully in swing, our cameras were there to catch the first of the festivities. The women's soccer team took on their rival, Georgia State, last week. We give you the details of how they came out on top. If it matters to you, it matters to us. And it all starts right now. This is your newsroom with our team of reporters in the field covering the stories that matter to you. Now from the George Ann Media Group, this is your newsroom. Hello everyone, welcome to your newsroom. I'm Daniel Whitman. And I'm Ashley Watts. The Office of Student Activities and the Kiwanis Fair Parade Committee hosted a parade in downtown Statesboro where they invited members of the community, students, and alumni to celebrate the commencement of Homecoming Week. I was there to give you an inside look into the excitement of this week. This year's Homecoming Parade marked a big change to the usual festivities. The Kiwanis Fair Parade and Georgia Southern's Homecoming Parade combined into one bringing both the university and the local community together to kick off a fun-filled week. Um, the town isn't big enough to have two parades, two large-scale parades um, in one week, so joining forces, this is something that I know I personally have been wanting to do for several years, and I truly do think that um, it's going to be more impactful for just the greater Statesboro community and Georgia Southern, because homecoming is not just a Georgia Southern thing, it's a all-Statesboro thing. From university organizations showcasing their pride, to local businesses working to get involved with the community, and even political figures campaigning for office, there was a variety of floats showcased Monday night. The parade brought music, dancing, and fun to the streets of Statesboro. Kiwanis District 17 Lieutenant Governor Trish Tootle did not wish to appear on camera, but gave me this statement. Quote, Georgia Southern is such a big part of who we are. We are hoping that to the Kiwanis Club spectators, they will get to see more of what Georgia Southern is doing. Then for Georgia Southern, they will have a larger audience to see what they've done, not just the school, but the whole community. Georgia Southern homecoming royalty nominees and their respective sororities and fraternities also participated in the parade to campaign for votes. I spoke to FIMU member Daisy Ortiz to hear more about homecoming week for Greek life. So we had a float that went by with our candidates and basically it's just such a fun way to get like the entire community, the entire like uh, school involved and like everything that's going on. And it's just so much fun, like everything that they have on, and, like the different shows, different events, it's a lot of fun. Reporting in Statesboro, I'm Ashley Watts, your newsroom. Combining the homecoming parade with the Kiwanis Ogeechee Fair Parade this year resulted in a much bigger turnout. Memory Littles told me that last year's parade had 30 to 40 flow entries and this year's had over 100. For more information on upcoming homecoming events, check out the Office of Student Activities Instagram at OSAGSU. The Downtown Statesboro Development Authority hosted the 14th Annual Party Impressions Scare on the Square event last weekend. This free event offered games, rides, contests, and more. Your newsroom's James Sasser was there to capture the fun. The Statesboro community has started their Halloween celebrations early with Scare on the Square. The event ran from 9 to 1 and hosted people of all ages. The Party Impressions store hosted and provided entertainment. This is the second year in a row that Party Impressions has hosted the Halloween event. They want to bring the spirit of the season to the community. Co-owners Amanda Dykes and Carrie Knight explain why they participate. Um, just getting here early in the morning, seeing how it transforms from just you know an alley to Candyland Alley, um, and just seeing the excitement on the kids' faces. Exactly. Just seeing everybody's faces when they see it, it's great. Um, fall is our busiest season at this store, just with all the different dress-up days, you know, elementary, middle, high school, college, kids, all the different things. Yes. So, but it's been fun to be able to focus on this event and have something to be on for families. The square was packed with activities for all ages. Vendors were there selling items and Halloween-themed treats. Numerous food trucks were selling food and drinks. 
The kids can participate in trunk or treat with local businesses and jump into bounce houses. The family costume contest displayed great outfits. The first place winning family dressed up as a football team and referees. Welcome everyone to the Party Impressions Scare on the Square. This is our 13th annual event. We have everything from vendors to a food court. Uh, down the street we have Trunk or Treat, Candyland Alley. We have uh, an alley just in the alley we have special needs uh, for people with sensory motor skills. Yeah. Sorry. And then we have a free hayride. And this event is made possible because of party impressions in the downtown states were development for you. The square was packed for four hours as community members enjoyed the fun. The axe throwing truck was popular. The Kiwanis Fair starts next week at the fairgrounds. Look for more great fall events the next two weeks before Halloween. So James, what exactly is Scare on the Square? Scare on the Square is an event hosted by Party Impressions to celebrate the Halloween season. There's plenty of activities for all ages here. There's costume contests, truck or treat, plenty of vendors, food to eat, and including a hayride. Uh, it's a great day here. Many people came out. Wonderful day to celebrate the Halloween season. James Sasser, your newsroom. That sounds like lots of fun. Thanks, James. The women's soccer team has been on a winning streak during these past few games. Last week, they matched up against Georgia State. Your newsroom's Javon Adams was at the game. Eagles women's soccer took on Georgia State last week after coming off two back-to-back -back wins. This matchup, however, was a battle that was rescheduled from September, but that didn't stop the Eagles from coming out fired up and ready. Both teams spent most of the first half bumping heads. But in the eighth minute of the game, forward Simone Tim put some points on the board for the Eagles. Defense held Georgia State for a while before they showed some signs of life answering back. Shortly after, Georgia Southern hit a penalty kick to double their score and leave the game with the W, with the game in the score of 2-1. to one. This big win moved the Eagles record to 8-5 and five overall and 3-3 three and three in the Sun Belt. I went around campus to get Eagle Nation's thoughts on the turnout of this game. Last four minutes were uh, really intense, but uh, as soon as the goalie made that stop, I knew it was game over and we were going to win. They came out real hot on a four-game winning streak. Shoot, nobody's stopping them now. Uh, to get the first goal, she had to hit a corner kick, and I think that really set them up for the whole game. After going on a roll, we'll see if the women's soccer team will stay in the swing of things. This is Javon Adams, reporter from Statesboro, your newsroom. Javon, what's expected to come next for women's soccer? Well, the next match is a Sunbelt matchup against Marshall, and after holding out teams left and right, we'll see if they'll keep it up. I can't wait to see how they do. Thanks, Javon. Before I go, here are some events around Statesboro this week that you don't want to miss. For the rest of this week until Saturday, you can head to the Kiwanis Ogeechee Fair for rides, food, and fun. On Saturday, October 21st, you could walk jog or run in the True Blue 5K and Abby's Adventure Race while traveling through Georgia Southern's campus. And finally, also on Saturday, you can head to the Parker Homecoming Tailgate for free food, drinks, and games, and then head to the Homecoming Football Game against Louisiana Monroe. Thank you for joining us this week for your latest updates. We encourage you to connect with us on social media at your underscore newsroom. For now, for Daniel, and for all of us here at your newsroom, I'm Ashley Watts. We'll see you next week. Thank <laughs> you.